Jerry at Fair Oaks. sails dropped down, uh, twas as sad as sad could be, and we did speak only to break the silence of the sea. Very good, Marvin. Now the next stanza, Cadet Dal Campbell. All on a hot and copper sky, the bloody sun at noon, right up above the mast did stand, no bigger than the moon. That's right. All right, Cadet Phillips, the next stanza, please. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, day after day, day after day, we... We stuck, nor breath, nor motion, as idle as a painted ship upon a painted ocean. Yes, that construction does seem a little peculiar to us now, I know. But after all, Samuel Taylor Coleridge did write the rhyme of the ancient mariner in 1798, and the English language has undergone some quite drastic changes since then. The uh, next stanza, please, Cadet Dugan. Yes, ma'am. Uh, water, water everywhere. And all the boards did shrink. Water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. Well, that's, uh... Yes, Bruce? I beg your pardon again, Mrs. Gardner, but that's not quite correct. You're right, Bruce. It isn't exactly as the poem reads. What is the correct reading, do you know? Yes, I do. The last two lines should be, Water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. And that's correct. Thank you, Bruce. It's always been amazing to me that well-known passages from classic poems could be twisted and turned and changed around until they become recognizable to us only in a very different form from the original. But perhaps we can play some of the responsibility at the doorsteps of radio comedians, eh, boys? <laughs> <laughs> now we... Uh, oh, the period's almost over. Well, we'll go on with the rhyme of the ancient mariner tomorrow, continuing with part the second and going on from there with the third part. And, boys, we'll conclude our study of this poem in about three days. And when we do, you can expect a written test on the entire poem the day after. Oh, there <laughs> That's right, a written test. Um, Cadet Dugan, what class do you have now? Uh, just study hall, Mrs. Gardner. I see. I wonder if you'd mind staying here a few moments after class, and I'll write an excuse to Professor Custis in the study hall. Yes, ma'am. All right, boys, study up tonight on the next part of the Ancient Mariner, because... All right, Cadet, <coughs> dismissed. Oh, I'm ready to get out of there. Come right up here, Jerry. Yes, ma'am. Sit down, Jerry. Thank you. Jerry, do you mind if I ask you a question? Uh, no, ma'am, of course not. Well, I noticed that when Bruce Dow Campbell corrected Lee, and later when he corrected you on the reading of your stanza of the Ancient Mariner, you seemed quite annoyed. Annoyed, ma'am? Yes, very much so. Do you mind being corrected when you're wrong, Jerry? Oh, no, ma'am, I don't mind. Well, then... Why is it that when Bruce offers a correction of your recitations, you seem to dislike it so? Well, uh... Have you and Bruce had some sort of a disagreement, Jerry? Well, uh, uh, kind of. Mm-hmm. Do you mind telling me what it is? You know, grown folks often have misunderstandings too, Jerry. And when they do, it's always considered the most gentlemanly and broad-minded thing to do to get it cleared up as soon as possible. Yes, sir. You see, differences of opinion are all right. Differences between great men and women have made for the progress of civilization. But the greatest men and women have been willing to admit defeat or admit the other fellow's been right. 
when they've finally come to recognize the fact that they've been thinking along the wrong track. Now, Jerry, it's certainly true that you were wrong in your recitation today, and it just so happened that Bruce knew the stanza and you didn't. Yes, ma'am. Well, it may so happen that next week or a couple of weeks from now, sometime, you may know some recitation better than Bruce Dow Campbell. Don't you see? Yes, ma'am. Well, then, do you think it would be right for Bruce to become angry because you were able to recite more accurately or better than he? No, ma'am. Then, well, what is it, Jerry? It isn't just that Bruce knew the stanza better than you did today, is it? No, ma'am. Well, then what is it? Well, golly, I, I mean... Come right out with it, Jerry. That's the only way we can get this thing cleared up. And I think we all want to clear it up, don't we? Yes, ma'am. All right, then. Well... I don't care if Bruce or anybody else knows something in class better than I do. Gee, every time Lee or Harold Inwell or any of the other fellows know something better than I do, well, I just feel kind of glad that it was somebody I know pretty well. And that maybe next time I'll be the one that can make a good recitation. But with Bruce Dow Campbell, well... Yes? Well, gee, Miss Gardner, I don't know exactly how to say it, but... Well, it's just the way he does it. Oh, I see. Yeah, he always seems to kind of get a kick out of being better than Lee or me. He kind of looks at us and grins like we were a couple of dummies. Dummies? I mean, well, like we don't know anything at all, and like he knows everything there is to know. I understand. Well, um, uh, tell me, Jerry, have you tried to know Bruce better? You realize, of course, that Bruce has had an entirely different sort of training than any of the other boys here at Fair Oaks. He's been trained under very strict discipline in India and in England. And he's accustomed to doing everything very properly. He's been trained to treat everyone, not only his teachers and his officers, but everyone he meets with the greatest courtesy. Oh, our idea of courtesy probably somewhat different than that to which Bruce is accustomed. It may be quite possible that, that you've misunderstood him. and You haven't tried to get together with him and know him better. No, ma'am. That isn't true. Oh? No, ma'am. Just yesterday, over in Max's place, Bruce came in, and I tried to be nice to him and treat him just like I treat all the other guys, I mean, all the other cadets. And, well, Bruce flared up and got sore about something I said. Oh, and what did you say, Jerry? Well, I just said that... Oh, I don't exactly remember what I said, but it was just something like, if, if you want to fight about somebody being friendly, well, then you are a sap. Yes, and then what happened? Well, I don't know exactly how it happened, but I said something else, and then Bruce hit me. Oh, Jerry. Yeah, and then, well, Mac came into the store from his back room just in time to stop us from fighting some more. Hmm. Well, then you're pretty well convinced that Bruce Dow Campbell has taken a definite dislike to you and Lee. Is that it? Yes, ma'am. Well, that's too bad. I'm sorry. All right, Jerry, I'll give you a tardy slip for Professor Custis and study hall. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Jerry. Yes, ma'am? Also give this note to Professor Custis for me, will you please? Yes, Mrs. Gardner. I'll be glad to. All right, that's all. And thank you for staying, Jerry. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'll see you in class tomorrow. And be sure to study the ancient mariner, won't you? Yes, ma'am. I will. Professor Custis. Yes, my boy. Oh, Dugan. Yes, what is it? I, uh, Mrs. Gardner kept me after English lit class for a few minutes, and she gave me this tardy slip to give to you. Tardy slip? Tar oh, yes, of course. I didn't know you weren't in the study hall, my boy. All right. And, uh, Mrs. Gardner asked me to give you this note, too, sir. Note? Oh, very well, Dugan. Thank you. You may go to your table and resume study. Yes, sir. Hi, stupid. Oh, cut it out. What's the matter? Why did Mrs. Gardner keep you after class? Nothing's the matter. Keep quiet. We're supposed to be studying. Mm-hmm. Something's up. What's it all about, Jerry? Nothing. For the love of Mike Lee, let's study. Okay, okay. Oh, come on. Tell me what Mrs. Gardner said. All right, if you want to know. She asked me all about our trouble with Bruce Dow Campbell. Our trouble? All right, and then, then my, my trouble. And what did you tell her? Well, I told her the truth. What do you think? 
Gosh, you're certainly in a swell humor today. Well, it gets my goat that out of all the cadets at Fair Oaks, there should be two heels like Bruce Dell Campbell and Red Morrison. That's all. And that you should have to get mixed up with them, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is too bad. But as long as you're here, I guess you'll just have to make the best of it. Yeah, I guess so. What was it you gave to Professor Custis just now? Oh, just a tardy slip. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, but there were two things you handed. Oh, uh, the other was a note Mrs. Gardner wanted to send to Professor Custis. Oh, I see. Cadet well, Dugan. Uh, oh, golly, now we've done it. Old Stormy Weather's going to call me up for talking. Cadet Dugan? Yes, sir? Come here a moment, please. And Cadet Dow Campbell? Yes, sir? You come here a moment, too, please. Yes, sir. Now, what do you suppose that means? I don't know. Can't be about talking in study hall, because dear little Bruce wouldn't do a thing like that. Well, go on up to the desk and find out. Okay. <coughs> yes, sir? <clears throat> Dugan and Dal Campbell, uh, you're both in my ancient history class tomorrow afternoon, are you not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I have a special problem recitation I'd like to have you two work out to present to the rest of the class tomorrow. Would you like to do that? Well, uh, I'd I... I'd be glad to work it out alone, if you don't mind, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. So would I. Well, now... No, I think not. I want to have two boys work on this, because I'd like to have two different viewpoints. Of course, uh, I'll find two other cadets who will work it out. That is, if you two lads don't want to take the time. Oh, no, sir. I'll be glad to work with anybody. Good, uh, good. Uh, yes, sir. I'll work on it. Yes. Well, in our studies of Pythagoras and his effect on the Roman Empire... There are two of his students whom we touched on but lightly. I'd like to have a special report made tomorrow afternoon on Damon and Phintius. Damon and Phineas? Yes, Damon and Phintius. Phintius is more correctly Grecian than Pythias, Dugan. <coughs> oh, oh, yes, sir, I see. Now, you two lads can work that report out tonight during your evening study period, can't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very I well. I think you'll find a rather comprehensive study of that incident in my book, Greek Philosophy and Its Effect on Modern Ethics. That's in section C, shelf four. Yes, yes sir. sir. Very well, that's all, boys. I'll expect a good report tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Dugan. Yeah? I'll meet you at the table near section C right after dinner, if that's satisfactory. Yeah, it's satisfactory. Okay. Uh, and I might say that I'll do my very best to forget any personal feelings during our study on this report, if you'll do the same. Yeah. Okay, that's all, that's all right with me. Very well. See you this evening. Mm -hmm.